The Sunday Times is the largest selling British national newspaper in the quality press market category. It is published by Times Newspapers Limited, a subsidiary of News UK, which is in turn owned by News Corp. Times Newspapers also publishes The Times. The two papers were founded independently and have been under common ownership only since 1966. They were bought by News International in 1981. The Sunday Times occupies a dominant position in the quality Sunday market, its circulation of just under one million equals that of its main rivals, the Sunday Telegraph and the Observer, combined. While some other national newspapers moved to a tabloid format in the early 2000s, the Sunday Times has retained the larger broadsheet format and has said that it will continue to do so. It sells more than twice as many copies as its sister paper, The Times, which is published Monday to Saturday. The Sunday Times has acquired a reputation for the strength of its investigative reporting, much of it by its award winning Insight team, and also for its wide ranging foreign coverage. It has a number of popular writers, columnists, and commentators, including Jeremy Clarkson and Brian Appleyard. A. A. Gill was a prominent columnist for many years. It was Britain's first multi section newspaper and remains substantially larger than its rivals. A typical edition contains the equivalent of 450 to 500 tabloid pages. Besides the main news section, it has standalone news review, business, sport, money, and appointments sections, all broadsheet. There are three magazines The Sunday Times Magazine, Culture, and Style, and two tabloid supplements Travel and Home. It has a website and separate digital editions configured for both the iOS operating system for the Apple iPad and the Android operating system for such devices as the Google Nexus, all of which offer video clips, extra features and multimedia and other material not found in the printed version of the newspaper. The paper publishes the Sunday Times Rich List, an annual survey of the wealthiest people in Britain and Ireland, equivalent to the Forbes 400 list in the United States, and a series of league tables with reviews of private British companies, in particular the Sunday Times Fast Track 100. The paper also produces an annual league table of the best performing state and independent schools at both junior and senior level across the United Kingdom, entitled Parent Power with additional information available online, and an annual league table of British universities and a similar one for Irish universities. It publishes the Sunday Times bestseller list of books in Britain, and a list of the 100 best companies to work for focusing on UK companies. It also organises the Sunday Times Oxford Literary Festival, held annually, and the Sunday Times Festival of Education, which takes place every year at Wellington College. History Founding and early history 1821 The paper began publication on 18 February 1821 as the New Observer, but from 21 April its title was changed to the Independent Observer. Its founder, Henry White, chose the name in an apparent attempt to take advantage of the success of the Observer, which had been founded in 1791, although there was no connection between the two papers. On 20 October 1822 it was reborn as the Sunday Times, although it had no relationship with the Times. In January 1823, White sold the paper to Daniel Whittle Harvey, a radical politician. Under its new owner, the Sunday Times notched up several firsts. A wood engraving it published of the coronation of Queen Victoria in 1838 was the largest illustration to have appeared in a British newspaper. In 1841, it became one of the first papers to serialize a novel, William Harrison Ainsworth's Old St. Paul's. The paper was bought in 1887 by Alice Ann Cornwell, who had made a fortune in mining in Australia and floating the Midas Mine Company of the London Stock Exchange. She bought the paper to promote her new company, the British and Australasian Mining Investment Company, and as a gift to her lover Frederick Stannard Phil Robinson. Robinson was installed as editor and she married him in 1894, she then sold it in 1893 to Frederick Beer, who already owned Observer. Beer appointed his wife, Rachel Sassoon Beer, as editor. She was already editor of Observer, the first woman to run a national newspaper, and continued to edit both titles until 1901. The Kemsley years 1915 
There was a further change of ownership in 1903, and then in 1915 the paper was bought by William Barry and his brother, Gomer Barry, later ennobled as Lord Camrose and Viscount Kemsley respectively. Under their ownership, the Sunday Times continued its reputation for innovation. On the 23rd of November 1930, it became the first Sunday newspaper to publish a 40-page issue, and on the 21st of January 1940, news replaced advertising on the front page. In 1943, the Kemsley Newspapers Group was established, with the Sunday Times becoming its flagship paper. At this time, Kemsley was the largest newspaper group in Britain. On 12 November 1945, Ian Fleming, who later created James Bond, joined the paper as foreign manager foreign editor, and special writer. The following month, circulation reached 500,000. On 28 September 1958 the paper launched a separate review section, becoming the first newspaper to publish two sections regularly. The Thomson Years 1959 In 1959 the Kemsley Group was bought by Lord Thomson, and in October 1960 circulation reached 1 million for the first time. In another first, on 4 February 1962 the editor, Dennis Hamilton, launched the Sunday Times magazine, at the insistence of newsagents, worried at the impact on sales of standalone magazines, it was initially called the Color Section and did not take the name The Sunday Times Magazine until 9 August 1964. The cover picture of the first issue was of Jean Shrimpton wearing a Mary Quant outfit and was taken by David Bailey. The magazine got off to a slow start, but the advertising soon began to pick up, and, over time, other newspapers launched magazines of their own. In 1963, the Insight investigative team was established under Clive Irving. On 27 September 1964, the business section was launched, making the Sunday Times Britain's first regular three-section newspaper. In September 1966, Thomson bought the Times, to form Times Newspapers Limited TNL. It was the first time both the Sunday Times and the Times had been brought under the same ownership. Harold Evans, editor from 1967 until 1981, established the Sunday Times as a leading campaigning and investigative newspaper. On 19 May 1968, the paper published its first major campaigning report on the drug thalidomide, which had been reported by the Australian doctor William McBride in The Lancet in 1961 as associated with birth defects, and quickly withdrawn. The newspaper published a four-page insight investigation, entitled The Thalidomide File, in the weekly review section. A compensation settlement for the UK victims was eventually reached with Distillers Company now part of Diageo, which had distributed the drug in the UK. TNL was plagued by a series of industrial disputes at its plant at Gray's Inn Road in London, with the print unions resisting attempts to replace the old-fashioned hot metal and labour-intensive linotype method with technology that would allow the papers to be composed electronically. Thomson offered to invest millions of pounds to buy out obstructive practices and overmanning, but the unions rejected every proposal. As a result, publication of the Sunday Times and other titles in the group was suspended in November 1978. It did not resume until November 1979. Although journalists at the Times had been on full pay during the suspension, they went on strike demanding more money after production was resumed. Kenneth Thompson, the head of the company, felt betrayed and decided to sell. Evans tried to organize a management buyout of the Sunday Times, but Thompson decided instead to sell to Rupert Murdoch, who he thought had a better chance of dealing with the trade unions. The Murdoch years 1981 present, Murdoch's News International acquired the group in February 1981. Murdoch, an Australian who in 1985 became a naturalised American citizen, already owned the Sun and the News of the World, but the Conservative government decided not to refer the deal to the Monopolies and Mergers Commission, citing a clause in the Fair Trading Act that exempted uneconomic businesses from referral. The Thomson Corporation had threatened to close the papers down if they were not taken over by someone else within an allotted time, and it was feared that any legal delay to Murdoch's takeover might lead to the two titles' demise. In return, Murdoch provided legally binding guarantees to preserve the title's editorial independence. Evans was appointed editor of The Times in February 1981 and was replaced at The Sunday Times by Frank Giles. 
In 1983, the newspaper bought the serialization rights to publish the faked Hitler diaries, thinking them to be genuine after they were authenticated by the own newspaper's own independent director, Hugh Trevor Roper, the historian and author of The Last Days of Hitler. Under Andrew Neal, editor from 1983 until 1994, the Sunday Times took a strongly Thatcherite slant that contrasted with the traditional paternalistic conservatism expounded by Peregrine Worst Thorne at the rival Sunday Telegraph. It also built on its reputation for investigations. Its scoops included the revelation in 1986 that Israel had manufactured more than 100 nuclear warheads and the publication in 1992 of extracts from Andrew Morton's book, Diana, Her True Story in Her Own Words. In the early 1990s, the paper courted controversy with a series of articles in which it rejected the role of HIV in causing AIDS. In January 1986, after the announcement of a strike by print workers, production of the Sunday Times, along with other newspapers in the group, was shifted to a new plant in Wapping, and the strikers were dismissed. The plant, which allowed journalists to input copy directly, was activated with the help of the Electrical, Electronic, Telecommunications and Plumbing Union the print unions posted pickets and organized demonstrations outside the new plant to try to dissuade journalists and others from working there, in what became known as the Wapping Dispute. The demonstrations sometimes turned violent. The protest ended in failure in February 1987. During Neil's editorship, a number of new sections were added, the annual The Sunday Times Rich List and The Funday Times. In 1989, the latter stopped appearing in print and was relaunched as a standalone website in March 2006 but was later closed, Style and Travel, News Review and Arts in 1990, and Culture in 1992. In September 1994, Style and Travel became two separate sections. John Witherow, who became editor at the end of 1994 after several months as acting editor, continued the newspaper's expansion. A website was launched in 1996 and new print sections added, Home in 2001, and Driving in 2002, which in 2006 was renamed Ingear. It reverted to the name Driving from 7 October 2012, to coincide with the launch of a new standalone website, Sunday Times Driving. Technology coverage was expanded in 2000 with the weekly color magazine Doors, and in 2003 the month, an editorial section presented as an interactive CD-ROM. Magazine partworks were regular editions, among them 1,000 Makers of Music, published over six weeks in 1997. John Witherow oversaw a rise in circulation to 1.3 million and reconfirmed the Sunday Times's reputation for publishing hard-hitting news stories, such as Cash for Questions in 1994 and Cash for Honors in 2006 and Revelations of Corruption at FIFA in 2010. The newspaper's foreign coverage has been especially strong, and its reporters, Marie Colvin, John Swain, Hala Jaber, Mark Franchetti and Christina Lamb have dominated the Foreign Reporter of the Year category at the British Press Awards since 2000. Marie Colvin, who worked for the paper from 1985, was killed in February 2012 by Syrian forces while covering the siege of Homs during that country's civil war. In common with other newspapers, the Sunday Times has been hit by a fall in circulation, which has declined from a peak of 1.3 million to just over 780,000. It has a number of digital only subscribers, which numbered 59,000 by March 2014. During January 2013, Martin Ivans became acting editor of the Sunday Times in succession to John Witherow, who became the acting editor of the Times at the same time. The independent directors rejected a permanent position for Ivans as editors to avoid any possible merger of the Sunday Times and Daily Times titles. <laughs> Online presence The Sunday Times has its own website. It previously shared an online presence with The Times, but in May 2010 they both launched their own sites to reflect their distinct brand identities. Since July 2010, the sites have charged for access. An iPad edition was launched in December 2010, and an Android version in August 2011. Since July 2012, the digital version of the paper has been available on Apple's newsstand platform, allowing automated downloading of the news section. With over 500 megabytes of content every week, it is the biggest newspaper app in the world. The Sunday Times iPad app was named Newspaper App of the Year at the 2011 Newspaper Awards and has twice been ranked Best Newspaper or Magazine App in the World by iMonitor. 
Various subscription packages exist, giving access to both the print and digital versions of the paper. On 2 October 2012, The Sunday Times launched Sunday Times Driving, a separate classified advertising site for premium vehicles that also includes editorial content from the newspaper as well as specially commissioned articles. It can be accessed without cost. <laughs> Related publications The Sunday Times Travel Magazine This 164-page monthly magazine is sold separately from the newspaper and is Britain's best-selling travel magazine. The first issue of the Sunday Times Travel Magazine was in 2003, and it includes news, features and insider guides. Notable stories. Some of the more notable or controversial stories published in the Sunday Times include Thalidomide, a drug prescribed to pregnant women to treat morning sickness, was withdrawn in 1961 following reports that it was linked to a number of birth defects. The Sunday Times spent many years campaigning for compensation for the victims, providing case studies and evidence of the side effects. In 1968, the distillers company agreed to a multi-million pound compensation scheme for the victims. The paper sponsored Francis Chichester's single-handed circumnavigation of the world under sail in 1966-67, and the Sunday Times Golden Globe race in 1968-69. The Insight team ran an investigation into Kim Philby, the Soviet double agent, that ran on 1 October 1967 under the headline, Philby, I spied for Russia from 1933. Insight carried out a major investigation in 1972 into Bloody Sunday in Northern Ireland. The newspaper published the faked Hitler Diaries 1983, believing them to be genuine after they were authenticated by historian Hugh Trevor Roper. Israeli nuclear weapons, using information from Mordecai Venunu, the Sunday Times in 1986 revealed that Israel had manufactured more than 100 nuclear warheads. On 12 July 1987 the Sunday Times began serialization of the book Spycatcher, the memoirs of an MI5 agent, which had been banned in Britain. The paper successfully challenged subsequent legal action by the British government, winning its case at the European Court of Human Rights in 1991. The paper ran a story claiming Queen Elizabeth II, who generally maintains a strictly impartial role politically, was upset with the style of Margaret Thatcher's leadership. In 1990, in what became known as the Arms to Iraq Affair, the paper revealed how Matrix Churchill and other British firms were supplying arms to Saddam Hussein's Iraq. Over two years in the early 1990s, the Sunday Times published a series of articles rejecting the role of HIV in causing AIDS, calling the African AIDS epidemic a myth. In response, the scientific journal Nature described the paper's coverage of HIV, AIDS as seriously mistaken, and probably disastrous. Nature argued that the newspaper had so consistently misrepresented the role of HIV in the causation of AIDS that Nature plans to monitor its future treatment of the issue. In 1992, the paper published extracts from Andrew Morton's book, Diana, Her True Story in Her Own Words, which revealed for the first time the disastrous state of her marriage to Prince Charles. Also in 1992, the paper agreed to pay David Irving, an author widely criticized for Holocaust denial, the sum of £75,000 to authenticate the Goebbels diaries and edit them for serialization. The deal was quickly cancelled after drawing strong international criticism. In its «Cash for Questions» investigation in 1994, Graham Riddick, MP for Colne Valley and David Tredinick, MP for Bosworth, accepted cheques for £1,000 each from an Insight journalist posing as a businessman in return for tabling a parliamentary question. The investigation followed information that some MPs were taking one-off payments to table questions. Under the headline, KGB, Michael Foote was our agent. The Sunday Times ran an article on 19 February 1995 that claimed the Soviet intelligence services regarded Foote, a former leader of the Labour Party, as an agent of influence, codenamed Agent Boot, and that he had been in the pay of the KGB for many years. 
The article was based on the serialization of the memoirs of Oleg Gordievsky, a former high-ranking KGB officer who defected from the Soviet Union to Britain in 1985. Crucially, the newspaper used material from the original manuscript of the book which had not been included in the published version. Foote successfully sued, winning «substantial» damages. In 1997–98, the paper ran a series of exclusive stories based on revelations from Richard Tomlinson, a former MI6 spy, about life inside MI6 and secret MI6 operations around the world. During the siege of the United Nations compound in East Timor in 1999, the paper's foreign reporter, Marie Colvin was one of only three journalists all women who remained to the end with the 1,500 people trapped there. She reported their plight both in the Sunday Times and in interviews on radio and television and was widely credited with saving their lives. In 2003, the Sunday Times published confidential Whitehall documents revealing the names of more than 300 people who had declined New Year's, Queen's Birthday and Dissolution Honours i.e. knighthoods, damehoods, etc. In 2006, in an investigation that became known as Cash for Honors, the Sunday Times revealed how several prominent figures nominated for life peerages by the then Prime Minister, Tony Blair, had loaned large amounts of money to the Labour Party at the suggestion of Lord Levy, a Labour Party fundraiser. In mid-2009, the newspaper ran a series of articles revealing how politicians were abusing the expenses system. In January 2010, the Sunday Times published an article by Jonathan Leake, alleging that a figure in the IPCC Fourth Assessment Report was based on an unsubstantiated claim. The story attracted worldwide attention. However, a scientist quoted in the same article later stated that the newspaper story was wrong and that quotes of him had been used in a misleading way. Following an official complaint to the Press Complaints Commission, the Sunday Times retracted the story and apologized. In March 2010, undercover reporters from the Sunday Times Insight team filmed members of Parliament agreeing to work for a fictitious lobbying firm for fees of £3,000 to £5,000 a day. One of those implicated, Stephen Byers, described himself as, sort of like a cab for hire. In October 2010, an investigation by the newspaper exposed corruption within FIFA after a member of the association's committee which grants the World Cup guaranteed his vote to an undercover reporter after requesting £500,000 for a personal project. In 2011, the paper broke what became known as the Cash for Influence scandal. It revealed that Adrian Severin, Ernst Strasser, Pablo Zalba Bidegan and Zoran Toller tried to influence EU legislation in exchange for promised money. Both Strasser and Toller resigned in March 2011. In March 2012, the paper filmed Peter Crudders, the co-treasurer of the Conservative Party, offering access to David Cameron, the Prime Minister, in return for donations of £250,000 Crudders resigned several hours later. Cameron said, What happened was completely unacceptable. This is not the way we raise money in the Conservative Party. In September 2012, Jonathan Leake published an article in the Sunday Times under the headline, Only 100 Adult Cod in North Sea. This figure was later shown by a BBC article to be wildly incorrect. The newspaper published a correction, apologizing for an oversimplification in the headline, which had referred to a fall in the number of fully mature cod over the age of 13, thereby indicating this is the breeding age of cod. In fact, as the newspaper subsequently pointed out, cod can start breeding between the ages of 4 and 6, in which case there are many more mature cod in the North Sea. In January 2013, the Seven Times Tour de France winner Lance Armstrong confessed to having used performance-enhancing drugs during each of his tour victories. The confession ended years of denials about allegations of cheating during most of the cyclist's professional career. The Sunday Times chief sports writer David Walsh had spent over a decade investigating Armstrong, his team, and the systematic doping rife in the sport. The newspaper was forced to pay Armstrong £300,000 in damages in 2006 after he sued it for libel. Following Armstrong's lifelong ban and subsequent televised confession. The Sunday Times said it would sue him to recover the damages, plus interest and costs, for the original proceedings which it called, baseless and fraudulent.
In January 2013, The Sunday Times published a Gerald Scarfay caricature depicting Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu cementing a wall with blood and Palestinians trapped between the bricks. The cartoon sparked an outcry, compounded by the fact that its publication coincided with International Holocaust Remembrance Day, and was condemned by the Anti-Defamation League. After Rupert Murdoch tweeted that he considered it a grotesque, offensive cartoon, and that Scarfay had never reflected the opinions of the Sunday Times. The newspaper issued an apology. Journalist Ian Burrell, writing in The Independent, described the apology as an indication of the power of the Israel lobby in challenging critical media coverage of its politicians, and one that questions Rupert Murdoch's assertion that he does not interfere in the editorial content of his papers. In June 2015, the Sunday Times ran a lead front article titled, British Spies Betrayed to Russians and Chinese. The article was controversial because it contained numerous unlikely and unsubstantiated claims. Shortly after publication parts of the online version of the article were changed quietly by the newspaper. The article appeared to be an attempt to smear the American whistleblower Edward Snowden, thus fueling further doubt as to its independent editorship. Phone hacking scandal In July 2011 the Sunday Times was implicated in the wider news international phone hacking scandal which primarily involved the News of the World, a Murdoch tabloid newspaper published in the UK from 1843 to 2011. Former British Prime Minister Gordon Brown accused the Sunday Times of employing known criminals to impersonate him and obtain his private financial records. Brown's bank reported that an investigator employed by the Sunday Times repeatedly impersonated Brown to gain access to his bank account records. The Sunday Times vigorously denied these accusations and said that the story was in the public interest and that it had followed the Press Complaints Commission code on using subterfuge. Other editions Irish edition The Irish edition of the Sunday Times was launched on a small scale on 1993 with just two staff, Alan Ruddock and John Burns who is at present associate editor. It used the slogan, The English Just Don't Get It. It is now the third biggest selling newspaper in Ireland measured in terms of full price cover sales source, ABC January to June 2012. Circulation has grown steadily over the past two decades and stands at 127,336 on the island of Ireland 106,113 of which in the Republic. Circulation in the Republic of Ireland further declined to average weekly sales of 101,851. According to the ABC in November 2012, the paper is heavily additionalized, with extensive Irish coverage of politics, general news, business, personal finance, sport, culture, and lifestyle. The office employs 25 people. The paper also has a number of well-known freelance columnists including Brenda Power, Liam Fay, Matt Cooper, Damian Kybird, Jill Kirby and Stephen Price. The paper ended collaboration with Kevin Myers after it published a controversial column. The Irish edition has had four editors since it was set up, Alan Ruddick, Rory Godson, Fiona McHugh and, since 2005, Frank Fitzgibbon. Scottish edition For more than 20 years the paper has published a separate Scottish edition, which has been edited since January 2012 by Jason Allardyce. While most of the articles that run in the English edition appear in the Scottish edition, its staff also produces about a dozen Scottish news stories, including a front-page article, most weeks. The edition also contains a weekly, Scottish Focus feature and Scottish commentary, and covers Scottish sport in addition to providing Scottish television schedules. The Scottish issue is the biggest selling quality newspaper in the market, outselling both Scotland on Sunday and the Sunday Herald. <laughs> <laughs> Editors 1821, Henry White 1822, Daniel Whittle Harvey 
1828, Thomas Gaspee 1854, William Carpenter 1856, E. T. Smith 1858, Henry M. Barnett 1864, Joseph Knight and Ashby Sterry acting editors 1874, Joseph Hatton 1881, H. W. Oliphant 1887, P. Robinson 1890, Arthur William A. Beckett 1893, Rachel Beer 1901, Leonard Rees 1932, William W. Hadley 1950, Harry Hodson 1961, Dennis Hamilton 1967, Harold Evans 1981, Frank Giles 1983, Andrew Neal 1995, John Withrow 2013, Martin Ivins See also Mrs. Mills solves all your problems The Sunday Times Motorshow Live